Hello everyone, Trophy Winehunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing part two in my Coravin testing. So you can refer to my first video, which I did about three months ago, where I did two wines, two red wines, a Burgundy and also a Bordeaux wine. And I said I would come back to them. So now it's been about three months and I'm gonna reopen them again and taste them again. I haven't looked at my video from three months ago, so I don't know my tasting notes from there. And so we'll see if they're you know, still fresh. And what's new this time, I'm gonna add a white wine from a producer called Master Ray, which I've done a um, review of before. And uh, we're just kind of testing uh, how well the um, Corvin works. So the first wine we're gonna do is a Pomar from um, Butterfield. And so I'll mention that uh, one thing I didn't mention last time is sometimes I guess you should also take the, the foil off the cork uh, because actually I find that sometimes what happens is that you actually get um, a little bit of um, the cork or this, the foil in the actual wine and I get some metallicness in it. So uh, that wasn't too good. So this is the pomard and I'm going to pour a little bit to myself. Seal that up and just tell you a bit about this wine. So this is the David Butterfield 2011 Pomard. So it's a village wine, it's from Pomard and I'll try and do a close up of it. Let's see if I can just get that in the screen there for you. Um, so David Butterfield comes from a um, well-known travel funny, company. Uh, Butterfield and Robinson and it's a family travel business and I guess what happened is when he traveled it allowed him to travel all around the world and um, he traveled to Burgundy fell in love with it started his own operation in 2005 and so Butterfield is basically buys I think grapes from producers so uh, they source it from different sources and uh, he makes his wine. I actually don't believe he makes Pomard anymore. Uh, this is one of his first um, offerings, I think. But I did. I don't think I've seen him do this um, wine um, every year. So I think it kind of changes year to year from what he can get. Um, he places it in barrels, and it's usually aged for about twelve to sixteen months. So what we're expecting again, it's now been um, corv in for three months. Let's see how it's uh, smelling. So on the smell, it's I think fairly similar to what it was before. Maybe a little bit fresher, maybe a little bit of air to it, um, but not, I would say three months worth of it. It's very fresh still, very aromatic. It smells like cherries to me. Um, it actually smells quite nice. Um, so it's not closed at all, but I would not think this is a three month old wine. Let's put it that way. So still a lot of tannins, lots of fruit, um, lots of cherries in it, a uh, little bit of oak influence. Um, very mouth watering. So it's a nice wine. My rating on this wine is going to be um, 88 points. It's a nice wine. But as I recall from it, I don't think it's changed very much. I think it might have got a little bit better. Maybe it's come using the right glass. I don't know, know if I used a burgundy glass the last time, but I don't definitely there's no degradation in terms of the taste. Um, so I would say at least for this wine, um, the uh, Corvin has worked and we'll put this away and um, see in another three months how it tastes. This is the second wine. This is Chateau de Roc 2015 of Bordeaux Superior. Um, so again, it should taste um, quite tannic still. Um, so we'll see how this goes. And I don't know how you guys do it at home, how you guys have done it with um, your wines. Um, like do you have some techniques to spin it around? It seemed to me that it poured um, quite well. Um, I just looked at the top of the corks and it seemed to seal up quite well the first time. So I think what I did the mistake I always do is just 
put in the plunger, uh, the needle without taking out the foil, I probably should take out the foil. Um, and that probably is because I, I, for some reason, I always think the foil is gonna give some added protection, but probably not. It's how, probably better to take off the foil uh, one that you know you've carved in the wine. Secondly, you can actually see if it's leaking or not. So again, three month, um, it should be a pretty tannic wine. So if it's really soft, maybe that would be a little bit of a degradation of the wine. Um, actually, it still tastes, smells quite fresh. I don't think there's much degradation again. Um, it smells really nice, so maybe like a little bit of degradation or a little bit of aeration, but um, it still is quite fresh. It might have improved a little bit. Again, it could be the glass that I'm using, um, but definitely not like three months worth of aeration. So still quite fresh. Now, again, I put these back. Um, in my wine fridge so again they've been you know in not in room temperature but in um, regular you know um, storage temperature so honestly I don't think there's much difference in the taste in my recollection between three months ago and now. So again, I would say it's worked quite nicely for this wine. And what I'll do is on the next video, I will talk a little bit more about Chateau La Rock. And then on the last video, um, that so the next video will be six months from now, uh, when I opened it, the next video after that maybe nine months or a year, and then I'll talk about the third wine. So again, I think it's worked for this wine. It's very tannic. Um, it doesn't feel aged at all, so. I think the Corvin has worked quite well. The first time I did this, I only had two red wines, but then when I thought about it, I thought, well, why wouldn't I do a white wine? That's actually a better wine to do for this type of testing because if there was going to be um, some uh, degradation in taste, that would probably show up more with white wines. Um, so this is from one of my favorite producers. I've done a re um, review of them, their Domaine Domastere. Um, from the Camarque region um, and so this is a blend I believe um, so we'll taste this first and just get a kind of an introductory taste of it again I won't talk too much about the wine until we kind of taste it a little bit more but this is kind of um, an odd bottle and it's an odd situation because we're doing going from a red wine to a white wine one of the mistakes that I make quite often is that um, I actually wash the, kind of rinse it out with water um, each time. I don't think I need to do that, in fact. I think all I have to do is just put it in, because I'm always afraid if I'm going for a red wine to a white wine, will the red wine get into the white wine? So I wash it out with water, and then the water gets in there, and I think the water disturbs um, things in terms of the, uh, the dilution of the wine. So probably that's not a good idea. So let's just smell this wine to get... Um, a kind of a base note for this wine. Um, it's uh, unusual because it's got a little bit of yeastiness or toastiness to it. Not as fruity as I expected, so that's good. Um, kind of light tropical fruits. Taste again, very tropical in terms of nature. I would say not not very citrusy, not like a Sauvignon Blanc, but almost like a Pinot Blanc to me. Like between a Pinot Blanc and a Chardonnay or a Vaugnier. I actually don't even know the mix of this wine, so I'm guessing. Um, but uh, quite nice actually, um, on the drier style. So again, tropical flavors. So. That's a nice base tasting note for this wine, and there's lots of freshness and vibrancy. So we're gonna check back on this wine in another three months. Uh, this will be a three month, and then the red wines will be six months into their aging. Uh, but so far, I think this is part two uh, of my test, and I think the um, Corvin has passed with flying colors. I think it, doesn't, it has um, kept the wine very fresh 
in my fridge or in my wine cellar for three months. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and uh, until next time, happy drinking.